Oh, bonjour, bonjour à tous. Euh, bonjour. Alors, je vous souhaite la bienvenue. Mon nom est Michel Lepage, du département de psychopédagogie et anthropologie de l'Université de Montréal. Euh, ça fait plaisir de présider cette finance de thèse de Mme Catherine Tachman touré qui nous présente les résultats de son travail aujourd'hui. Euh, les membres du jury euh, qui sont ici pour euh, échanger avec la, 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 la <coughs> candidate euh, sont Mme Diane Biron de l'Université de Sherbrooke, M. Vassilis Comis qui, euh, de l'Université de Patras qui se joint à nous par, euh, par Skype, je pense, euh, par euh, vidéo. Euh, Madame Colette Gervais, qui est la co-directrice de la thèse, et M. Thierry Carcentier, directeur de la thèse. Euh, Monsieur François Bowen, qui était le représentant de la doyenne, ne peut malheureusement pas venir à, assister à la présentation. Euh, il s'en désolait d'ailleurs beaucoup parce que ça l'avait intéressé lorsqu'il a reçu la copie. Alors, il pourra peut-être échanger avec, avec vous euh, plus tard, peut-être euh, au cours de la semaine. Euh, donc, euh, j'agirai à titre aussi de représentant de la doyenne pour cette euh, présentation. Alors, j'ai les deux chapeaux qui me font parfaitement. Alors, euh, je vous laisse la place. Donc, il y aura d'abord une présentation d'une vingtaine de minutes, 20-25 minutes. Ensuite, une première ronde de questions, peut-être une deuxième. On verra pour échanger, poser des questions, et porter des éclaircissements. Et euh, conclure ensuite par... Euh, une conclusion de la, de, la, de la candidate et ensuite le jury va se retirer pour délibérer, pour revenir ensuite avec le, la décision. Hop. Alors voilà, je vous laisse la place donc euh, pour votre présentation. Merci. Merci beaucoup, professeur Lepage et les membres du jury. I'm very much looking forward uh, this morning to sharing the results of my research on the pedagogical relation of information and communication technologies by West African educators. I will be speaking in French, but I look forward to your questions both in French and in English. Donc, si vous me, me, me le permettez, je vais parler en français, en anglais, mais j'attends vos questions en anglais et en français. This, uh, my work is dedicated to Aliun Badaha Kamaha, who is in part responsible for my interest in the question that was researched. And the outline for my presentation is rather standard. I present the context and the problem, the research objective, and then some uh, basic concepts for the research before presenting the research methodology used. And then I'll spend most of the time on the findings before I conclude. So, education in Africa today is the result of centuries of cultural encounters. In indigenous African education, school and life were one, with an entire community responsible for teaching children through observation, storytelling, and engagement with everyday life. In the 1100s, madrasas were introduced for the study of the Quran. And today in Mali, madrasas account for 17% of grade one through nine schools. In the 19th century, French colonists in West Africa put in place formal education to train Africans for the colonial administration. African cultural initiative and imagination were suppressed. Learners experienced and continue to experience alienation and dualism. In this context of disconnect between schools and their milieu and the devalorization of African cultures and values, African scholars call for renewal of school culture, ones in which pedagogies are informed by African peoples. Needed are flexible pedagogies that facilitate opportunities to rethink and remix cultures and identities. According to Professor Fonkwa, information and communication technologies, or ICT, hold promise for the development of pedagogies that are flexible and adaptable and account for complexity and plurality. In reading such scholars, I became more interested in the proliferation of ICT in Africa. In 2001, most African countries were connected to internet. Carsonti and Chamini 
Ngamo estimated in 2007 that 17% of West and Central African teachers were already using ICT to teach their subjects. Subjects meaning their disciplines. The African Union encourages the integration of ICT into teaching and learning, not only to participate in the knowledge economy, but also to disseminate and promote African cultures ar across the world. In this context of the proliferation of ICT and the use of ICT in teaching and promises of ICT in relation to technologic, pedagogical renewal and the promotion of African cultures, I became curious about how and why teachers were actually using ICT. And this curiosity led to the research objective of how and why West African educators pedagogically appropriate information and communication technology to affect their own teaching. And we are specifically related, interested in this objective in relation to primary and high school teachers in Bamako, Mali. We were interested in how and why they appropriate ICT and with what perceived effects. We were also interested in the conversations that these teachers were having outside the classroom about the use of ICT in education. And finally, we were interested in another group of educators, namely university professors in four different African, West African countries. So some main concepts. When we talk about ICT, we mean computers and internet. Uh, ICT not just as technological tools, but as cultural tools being mobilized in specific pedagogical and sociocultural contexts. We also have a sociocultural perspective when we relate to education, to account for education as rooted in society and specific historical and cultural contexts. And this draws, this perspective draws on the works of Vygotsky, Bruner, Obanya, and others who maintain that the mind is not separate from society and that learning must be considered in its cultural context. The most important concept that we mobilized is that of appropriation as a lens through which to understand educators' use of technology. Appropriating newness and being and using it strategically to meet contextualized objectives, often in resistance to the status quo. Tensions play out between habit and innovation as new is more. When educators pedagogically appropriate ICT, they exert their agency and invest their intentions, beliefs, values, and aspirations in the process. They shape ICT and are shaped by it. The technology become rooted in the social, economic, and cultural realities. Growing out of sociology, cultural studies, and communication and media studies beginning in the 1960s, the concept of appropriation is in contrast to determination, which assumes that technology and media determine behavior. This conceptual lens of appropriation accounts for human ingenuity in confronting complexities and contradictions, and for the non-linearity of constantly adapting the new to achieve contextualized needs and aspirations. To understand educators' pedagogical appropriation of ICT, we wanted a research methodology that would be rich and explicative <laughs> methodology. We recruited 31 participants to take part in this study, and this included 23 teachers and two administrators. City preferred West Africa. The 31%, 13% were women and 87% were men, and all were involved in the use of ICT in education. Ag data, in-depth interviews using semi-structured interview guides, and the uh, interviews were transcribed. We used thick of interpreting it when describing it. We also sought feedback from participants on the syntheses of their interviews. And we used hermeneutic circles going from the parts of the interviews to the whole, from individual interviews to sets of interviews, and from the interviews to literature that could explain what was going on. We also used QDA minor to code the uh, syntheses by theme. 
So let's turn to the results. I'll be presenting the results in relation to each of the three specific research objectives that we reviewed before. The first two having to do with primary and high school teachers, and the third having to do with university professors. In relation to the first specific research objective regarding, relating to how and why primary through high school teachers in Mali pedagogically appropriate ICT and, according to them, changes that seem to occur in the process. What we heard from teachers is how they became familiar with ICT, usually through other people, so already showing the highly social nature of the pedagogical appropriation of ICT and they were self-motivated or else they were encouraged by their school hierarchy to learn about ICT. And eventually, it meshed into their everyday lives. And we have some examples of this meshing into everyday life. For example, Jeremiah said, L'éthique était étrange. Ils sont devenus intimes. And Amidou said, La technologie est carrément liée à ma personne. So we have these two examples of how something alien or foreign became very intimate and part of the everyday lives of these teachers. And this is just an example of two of the 31 teachers. Teachers then began using ICT in teaching and learning. And they designed pedagogical activities using ICT, but they were guided by their pedagogical goals. And we have some examples of some of the pedagogical goals and the ICT, the learning activities using ICT. Our objective was to ensure that students learn to speak and not just write English. Because when he went to school, he could write English very well, but he couldn't speak. Um, and so he designed learning activities his students could engage in live conversation with other peers in other countries via internet. And so he was very much guided by his pedagogical goal. And then there are other ex examples of the pedagogical goals here and the learning activities that were designed in relation to those goals that we don't have time to go over today. It's learning. They talked to us about changes that they perceived in pedagogy amongst students and teachers, in course content, in classrooms and schools. I say us, but it was, it was me, the researcher. Um, in relation to pedagogy, teachers reported that their teaching styles were becoming more active approaches in which students are involved and considered and they considered that they as teachers were becoming more of a guide and less of someone who would lecture in a lecture something similar to a lecture hall mm -hmm. Ibrahima and Bintu Ibrahima explained à l'époque le maître dispensait les cours maintenant on partage les idées l'élève ne que je dis and Bintu explained Je ne fais plus les croquis au tableau. Je m'étale plus sur les leçons qu'auparavant, ce qui facilite la compréhension. So here we have examples from two teachers who learned to teach in a certain way, but are being called with their use of ICT to change the way that they, that they teach. And in relation to course content, Teachers explained to us that course content with the use of ICT was becoming less monotonous and less stagnant. Courses were enriched and updated, including sometimes with locally available knowledge and not just what was on the internet. Because as students felt free to bring things from the internet into the classroom, teachers and students also felt free to bring other <laughs> in detail. But if you have questions about it, we can go into it. And so there are other examples, again, that we won't go into. Why CT? And in the negotiation of tradition and novelty, as described by theorists of appropriation processes, newness is created. 
Teachers embraced ICT in relation to pedagogical goals and they embraced it for its transformative possibilities. The appropriation process seemed to catalyze active and socio-constructive learning. Teachers were envisioning the future and actively into learning in some classrooms and schools in Bamako. Moving on to the second specific research objective regarding about the use of ICT in teaching and learning. When we talked with teachers, they kept talking about conversations that they had about ICT with other people outside the classroom. Directors, pedagogical advisors, parents, and other community members. So let's take a look. So teachers and the nature of fresh talk some um, dated back to the 1950s, right after independence. It might be an exaggeration, but it shows his frustration with sometimes outdated curriculum, but also with peers who would get caught in a rut. Said, Learn how to bra bra to update their courses. According to him, there were tools right at their fingertips that could be used that all teachers weren't necessarily using, and that perhaps was putting the teaching core as a whole uh, behind and not allowing them to realize their full potential if we take the interpretation to its fullest extreme. Teachers would also talk with or re talk to us about their conversation with pedagogical advisors. Normally, a pedagogical advisor comes into the classroom to evaluate the teachers. But pedagogical advisors were coming into classrooms where teachers were using ICT and the advisors didn't know that ICT about and how it worked. Is it credible? You have to know what you want and know how to obtain it. So in a sense, the teachers were becoming resources to the pedagogical advisors, which, if you carry the interpretation far enough, uh, And just one more example of teachers talking with, other, with so, different social classrooms. They would talk to parents in relation to pedagogical issues. Remember Amidu who wanted his students to speak English and not just uh, write it? Well, parents would come him and tell Amidu that you're playing too much in class and you're not spending enough time preparing for exams. And so Amidu would take the time to engage with parents and explain the advantages of the uh, he was using to help him sacrifice exams. So he would, they would engage in an example of many examples that we heard of teachers engaging with parents. Again, the part about engaging with people in the communities around the schools, very interesting. Don't have time to get in that today, right now. Actively shaping ICT in a context where the community is responsible for education. And we could say that ICT might be a catalyst for the renewal. Uh, specific research objective, if the mouse wants to cooperate. So the third specific research objective had to do with why university professors pedagogically appropriate ICT. 
And to get to the bottom of this question, we use sociocultural interpretation of ICT itineraries of six West African professors. An ICT itinerary is merely the uh, interview transcript turned into a narrative that describes the teacher's encounter with ICT so that we can enter into their lived experience and perhaps understand things from their perspective. Let's take an example or look at some excerpts from two of these itineraries. First of all, Kadijatu. Avec les TIC, Kadijatu peut finir le programme même lors des grèves sur le campus et suivre des étudiants en dehors de la capitale. L'éthique l'aide à préparer les jeunes à obtenir du travail et à contribuer à la nation et au monde scientifique. So we see very practical concerns of Kadijatu to finish the program, but also ones about students being able to contribute more to the scholarly world. Sidi voudrait que les Africains utilisent de façon stratégique l'éthique pour apprendre, produire des connaissances et réaligner les relations de pouvoir. Selon lui, Il faut se lancer sur la scène des innovations, renover et défendre la culture africaine. So again, we see this very, this idea of contributing to science, but there's also another idea of realigning relations of power and even this idea of defending African culture. So when we looked at all six ICT itineraries of the professors, we saw three main re reasons for appropriating ICT, related respectively to past, present, and future. And we can take a look at those three main motivations. The first had to do with teacher professors wanting to recreate positive learning experiences, sometimes ones that they themselves had experienced for their students. So they wanted their students to, use IC to engage with ICT to feel more autonomous in learning, to enhance their reflection, and to be able to learn more with others. Second motivation was to facilitate African participation in the world. They wanted to, to use ICT with students to strengthen African scholarly production and extend the reach of African ideas and perspectives. And finally, a more future-oriented motivation was to transform relations and cultures in which they wanted to use ICT to help them interrogate heritage and renegotiate what counts as knowledge transform learning, and evolve African identities. So in brief, professors invested their cultures and personalities in the appropriation of ICT, contributing to African pedagogies and epistemological contexts for the integration of ICT that reflect African aspirations, for a better integration of Africans into society and into the world. So having presented the results from the three specific research objectives, I'd like to just quickly review those before we go to the conclusion. So in relation to the first specific research objective, how and why teachers appropriate ICT, with what changes? Teachers learned ICT through others and used it until it meshed into their everyday lives. They harnessed ICT for its transformative possibilities. They deployed it in relation to their pedagogical goals experienced changes in their teaching, which became more interactive, as well as some changes in classrooms and schools, which became more open and dialogical. Suggesting that ICT could be a catalyst for pedagogical change in context weighed down by the legacy of colonialism. In relation to the second specific research objective about teachers' conversations about ICT in education, Teachers' conversations outside the classroom, even with people who were not using ICT, facilitated the social shaping of ICT in a spirit of consensus that characterizes their culture, opening doors to the reconsideration of local and global cultures and their remixing, and pointing to pathways for revitalization of learning and the renewal of education. In relation to the third specific research objective, uh, why university professors pedagogically appropriate ICT, they wanted to shape their students' learning experiences, ensure they participate in the world, and help position them to transform relations and culture. To conclude, I would like to share a diagram of changes evident at multiple levels in society because sociocultural uh, research encourages us to look at what's going on in different spaces. But before doing so, I'd like to, us to keep in mind some of the limits of the study as we look at the diagram together. So I'll just mention the limits, present the diagram, and then the strengths of the research. 
we, sh we should keep in mind that there were a small number of participants in the study, 31 persons. So this means that we cannot uh, generalize the findings to all teachers in Mali or all teachers in West Africa. The results are drawn from teachers' perceptions, what they told us. So they were, these perceptions were not confirmed via formal interviews with others or via formal classroom observation. We should also keep in mind that most of the participants were fairly enthusiastic about ICT, even if they had some hesitations. Um, and so if we did a similar study with people who are less open to change, certainly the results could be different. And most of the teachers were from urban centers. So to get a better understanding of the pedagogical appropriation of ICT, we would also need to include educational settings in rural areas. And a longer term study could show how some of the changes that teachers were beginning to perceive actually take root or not in the context study. So moving on to the diagram that I would like to propose to you about changes and possibilities of change evident at multiple levels with the appro pedagogical appropriation of ICT. What we did was listen to teachers in the different spaces they described to us and then we tried to represent those spaces and also show the changes that they described to us that might be taking place in those spaces. So if we look at the personal level, what we heard about was the teacher becoming more of a guide and the learner becoming more active. When we look at the classroom level, we heard a lot about more room for discussion than in the classroom. We heard a lot about content being updated, content of courses. If we look at the school and the university level, what we heard about was the school and the university being more open and porous, more connected and more virtual as the institutions developed websites, computer labs, and entered into virtual contact with others and with knowledge, different sets of knowledge. And then it requires a little bit of extrapolation, but if we try to consider the cumulative effect of these different changes that teachers are perceiving and that may be emerging, we could imagine educational systems with more possibilities for active and interactive teaching and learning and better linkages between learning and life. And also more opportunities for teachers for informal learning through support networks, for example. And if we look at the community, again, the area we didn't have much time to talk about today, we could imagine better rela relations between the school and the community, where knowledge from the community is allowed into the school and where the community understands better what might be going on in the school because of the linkages that are created. And it was in interviewing the university professors that the wider world was most evoked. And in relation to the wider world, we could imagine more possibilities for African participation and presence. Of course, we need future studies to confirm how some of these uh, emerging changes are taking root or dying out. Just to mention a few strengths of the research. We provided insights into the process of harnessing ICT to pedagogical and other goals in West Africa. We linked the findings with literature from sociology and cultural psychology. The work was rich in inspiration from African scholars. We evoked epistemological di dilemmas such as the relevance of education, the very reason for the integration of ICT into education. We were able to meaningfully mobilize the concept of appropriation in educational contexts in West Africa, because it's one of the rare studies that actually does so. The qualitative research methodology allowed uh, participants to explain their actions and beliefs in their own words. The perspectives of teachers, which are often neglected or discounted in educational reform, were brought to the fore revealing some of the questions and challenges with which they grapple in coming to terms with informational and technological revolution. Through a holistic approach to the formal education system, we show that educators, whether working in primary or high school or at the university level, are acting on desires or were acting on desires to use ICT in transformative ways. Finally, we upset stereotypes of culture as stagnant or frozen and of Africans as recipients instead of shapers of identities and cultures. And I would just like to take a moment to thank all jury members who took the time to read very carefully the thesis document and who took the time to travel to be here today either in person 
or virtually, I very much appreciate your contribution to this process. And there are many others who were involved and who deserve to be thanked as well. Et merci beaucoup Catherine pour cette présentation fort intéressante. Euh, maintenant, nous allons passer aux membres du jury, aux questions des membres du jury. Euh, Madame Biron, vous oui. commencez. D'accord. Alors, à mon tour de vous féliciter pour euh, votre présentation. Merci.